Tesla appears to have accidentally revealed what could be a future supercharger stall in some city plans submitted in Massachusetts. So thanks to these filings that they submitted, it seems like they're trying to cover their bases in case they finish the V4 supercharger design by the time that this gets approved by the city. And it's not like a mind-boggling different design. In fact, it's very reminiscent of the urban superchargers that used to be limited to 72 kilowatts. Of course, the V4 one, though, is much bigger. In fact, it's very similar similar to the Tesla mega chargers we've seen installed both at Giga Nevada and the Frito-Lays facility in Modesto, California. But it comes, I think, with its own set of advantages. At least from the documents Tesla has submitted, it appears that the charging cable is a lot longer. It's no longer inside this little opening chasm that Tesla's had on superchargers basically since V1, which was a lot more boxy until they kind of rounded it out until the design it's in today. But I can already visualize just from the paperwork filings of this V4 supercharger that it's probably going to age and look a lot more simplified and elegant because if it's anything like the mega chargers they've installed or the old urban superchargers, the design looks less complex, there's less curvatures to it, and likely less glossy finishes. Sort of how we're kind of on this train of approaching the matte black trim instead of the chrome trim. I think that V4 superchargers are likely going to have kind of a white finish on the outside, which will likely held up to the weather and the elements around it a lot better than before. And now now that the cable is much longer, it should be a tad more accessible slash versatile so that you don't have to park exactly a certain way. And who knows, maybe the V4 supercharger is trying to more optimize itself for the Cybertruck, which is obviously going to be a much larger vehicle and probably need bigger parking spaces. And trying to get that Cybertruck lined up exactly right to the length of a supercharging cable may end up being pretty difficult, especially considering how far out the bed goes past the charge connector. So making the charge cables longer in the future Future makes a lot of sense, especially since Tesla has basically already confirmed they're trying to secure funding from the United States government to build superchargers that will also charge non-Teslas. So I still see a lot of confusion out there about this, but yes, Tesla is intending on opening up the supercharging network to non-Teslas. They've already started doing it in Europe, and yes, they want to do it in the United States, but it's not just the flip of a switch, like one day you'll wake up and now every bolt can charge at a supercharger. For one, because the Tesla connector is not what non-Teslas are using. And for two, the plan is to introduce new superchargers that will have both the CCS connector and the Tesla connector. That way, all of the Tesla superchargers that are available now will continue to be exclusive superchargers for Teslas. And it's just new chargers that will be installed moving forward that will have both adapters. That way you can plug in whether you're a Tesla or a non-Tesla. And I understand that's confusing. I wish our government would have agreed on a standard a lot earlier, but unfortunately they did and that's why we have Teslas all over the place and they have the highest market share and they're all using the Tesla connector. Well, at the same time, everyone who's not Tesla wants to accommodate for this big, clunky, kind of ugly looking CCS connector, which is much harder to hold and even plug in. And as many have pointed out overseas, like Bjorn Nyland, the pins that keep that CCS connector in place are known to wear out and not age as well statistically as Tesla connectors have. So that's why I encourage anyone who agrees with me on this being stupid to sign the change.org petition started by Aptera. They're in favor of there being one standard in the U.S. and that it should be the best standard, which is the Tesla connector. And I know there's been disagreements with people on that. Like, no, it doesn't matter that most people driving electric vehicles in the U.S. are using the Tesla connector. All that matters is that the most amount of companies have agreed on CCS. And we should prioritize the company's ease of switching, not so much the driver's ease of switching. I disagree with that wholeheartedly, personally. I think that... We we should prioritize EV customers because they're the ones who are actually putting money towards these vehicles and having to drive them and use them every day. We should punish the least possible number of drivers with the transition to a single connector, not punish the least number of businesses because all the companies that are not Tesla in the US building EVs, they haven't reached super high volume yet. So I'd say it's better to switch now than later. But even if you think Tesla superchargers aren't fast enough, Elon Musk has on numerous occasions referenced that they plan on upgrading the supercharging network to go to 300 or 350 kilowatts of charging speed. And we're inferring a little bit here, but I'm betting the V4 superchargers with this new redesigned cabinet and everything will be capable of charging at 350 kilowatts. The only reason they're not doing it now is not because they're limited by the connector shape. I don't believe it's that CCS is this magic shape that can hit 350 kilowatts and the Tesla connector shape is just inherently limited to 250 because when they unveiled the Cybertruck, they said that can 
get over 250 kilowatts. And then later in a tweet, Elon was joking about 350 kilowatts being a mere child's toy. And then went on to say that via software updates in the future, they would be able to expand V3 superchargers even to go over 250 kilowatts, likely to 300 or more. But a lot of people are forgetting the entire point of the equation. We're not limited by the connector or what even the charger is capable of doing. We're partially limited by what the vehicle is capable of doing. And because Tesla is focusing on mass market EVs, most of the vehicles they're working on are the Model 3 and the Model Y. Both of those vehicles are very aerodynamic, very efficient, so they don't need the massive battery packs that all of the non-Teslas that support 350 kilowatts. There's not that many of them in the first place, so it kind of surprises me when people say like, oh, we can't have that connector because it can't go 350 kilowatts. First of all, yes, it can. Second of all, there's very, very few EVs actually capable of charging at 350 kilowatts, and the ones that do require fairly large battery packs, and those EVs are not selling at high volume. What matters more so than the kilowatts themselves is what you do with those kilowatt hours in your pack, and because Model 3s and Ys are mostly rocking 60 to 80 kilowatt hour battery packs, those really don't need 350 kilowatts, because they can still charge insanely fast with 250 kilowatts. Charging curve might have a bigger impact than your actual total peak charge rate if you're not able to sustain that for very long. And in the future, most people buying EVs aren't going to be buying Porsche Taycans or Lucid Airs or Rivian R1Ts or any of that stuff. Most people are going to be trying to buy more affordable electric vehicles, which most likely are going to be using lithium iron phosphate batteries. They're cheaper to build and there's more raw materials accessible to them, but they also don't normally charge over 200 kilowatts. Like the LFP battery I'm getting in my Model 3 maxes out at around 170 kilowatts. So the idea that the connector has to be able to do 350 or 400 or 500 kilowatts in the future, I don't think matters all that much because I don't think in the future most EVs are all going to be rocking 100 to 150 kilowatt hour battery packs. Most of them are probably going to be around 60 to 70, in which case 200 kilowatts or 250 kilowatts is plenty fast. And I think Tesla knew that and I just want to applaud them for being so forward thinking with the Tesla connector because it's basically a 10 year old design. They came up with it 10 years ago and it's scaled so incredibly well to the point that it's the most common charge connector of used in the United States. Superchargers outnumber Electrify America stations and Teslas are far higher in demand than any other electric vehicle in the United States. And you don't see anyone complaining about the connector charging speed. Most people are just really, really impressed with the simplicity and ease of use of the supercharging network that you don't have to pull up to this charge station and think, oh, should I go to the 350 kilowatt stall or should I move to the 150 kilowatt stall? Oh, which car do I have? No, that's why so many people buy Teslas is because of how simple it is to just drive in, plug in, and it starts charging. That's it. Tesla got the core fundamentals right with this connector, and I think they're going to continue to apply that with the V4 superchargers, and if we don't agree on a single standard, I think it will not be because the Tesla connector wasn't good enough. It's just going to be because of politics and our government not liking Tesla because they don't have unions and that type of issue. Either way, though, I'm excited for V4 superchargers to start popping up around the country. I think they'll look a lot more futuristic and a lot more modernized than kind of the glossy dated look of V2 and V3 superchargers. I won't miss them, but how do you guys feel about the updated design and how do you feel about the elegance and simplicity of the Tesla connector as a whole? Feel free to let me know all that good stuff down below and thank you to everyone on Patreon supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.